What's up guys, welcome to your 65th Java tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be building a new class to handle the events when both of our checkboxes are checked. So let's go ahead and make a new class called handler class to do just this. We'll go private class, name it handler class, there we go, get it eventually. Implements, I gotta type so, AMP implements item listener there we go now what this does pretty much is a class that implements item listener and what implements mean is we get to use all the methods from item listener but we're making a promise to item listener item listener says alright here here's what would happen if they're having a conversation item listener would be like alright you want to inherit from me fine you can but promise if you implement for me, you have to overwrite each one of my classes. So look at this. It says the type handler, handler class must implement the inherited abstract method. So there's abstract methods in item listener that we need to overwrite pretty much. Lucky for us, there's only one method in item listener, not a very big class. And this method is called item state changed. So let's go ahead and overwrite this baby right now. So public void item state change right like that make sure you spell it right if not you're gonna have some problems and the parameter it takes here is the item event event object so what's going on pretty much is this every time you click one of these checkboxes essentially attach them to item listener something calls an item event occurs or pretty much an event occurs now what we can do with this event is add some functionality to it and it can be handled by an item listener object which we created so now whenever since this item listener is listening to this bold box whenever an item event occurs it's gonna run whatever's in here so let's go ahead and make some code to put in here first of all we're gonna want font name it font and set it equal to null and this is pretty much just going to store the font that we're going to change so what we want to do is say alright if you click the bold box we want it bold if you click the italic box we want the font italics if you click the bold box and the italic box we want them bold and italics if nothing's clicked just have plain font so let's go ahead and first write if bold box dot and the thing you write is is selected just like that and this is built-in method to show if it's checked or not so if bold box is selected and let me find it and italic what did I name it italic box dot is selected then what do we want to do well let's go ahead and change that font equal to new Font, and we're going to be doing a lot of copy and pasting after this. We want to change it to new font. First of all, we want to make it serif, just like before. We want to take that font and make it bold. And actually, we need that all in caps. I forgot. And we also want to take that font and make it italic. And then we want the size to be 14. So, get on my way, house. So, what this means is... If you press the bold box and the italic box, if both of them are checked, then we want to change the font to bold and italics. So what other options do we have here? Well, we have else if. We can also have an option that if only the bold box is selected. So let me tighten that up. So actually, we can just go ahead and copy this. A little too easy. So else if only the bold box is selected, then what do we want to do? We want to take that font and set it equal to new font and we can probably copy this font equal serif bold copy what did I copy there we go too easy so if only the bold box selected then font equals serif bold and in a size of 14 so now let's go ahead and make another else if for only if the italics is selected 
So copy, we're getting real lazy here, but really efficient. How awesome is that? Italics, what's the name? Italic box, there we go. That's selected. Then we want to change the font to font italic. So now we only have one other option. If it runs through and sees that if bold is selected and italic is selected, nope. If bold selected, nope. If italics is selected, nope. Else, this only else is going to occur if nothing is selected. So what do we want to do? We want to do the font and set it equal to new font. And I guess I won't copy and paste it this time. Um, first is serif. And the rest is font up plain. And of course, we want to size 14 still. So now, well, it looks like we're good to go. And the last thing we have to do, now that we actually change that font, we actually need to set the font. So in our text field, we need to set font equal to that font that we just changed. So this pretty much says, all right, depending on what you selected, I'm going to style the font a certain way. And then at the end, when it tests for all the styles, it says, all right, I'm pretty much just going to set it on the screen right now. So now I have this from the last tutorial, uh, which you guys can see it pretty much just makes a new window on the screen puts a function on the window so you can actually close it set a size for that window and makes that window visible so now if we run this and click OK we go ahead and we got this thing right here and I probably should change that size but this is good now you see when you click bold the sentence bolds when you click italics it italicizes too if you unclick bold it just is only italics and not bold and if you uncheck them both it's back to normal now let me give you quite guys a real quick walkthrough one more time of how this works. Ah, <sighs> take a deep breath. You guys ready? Good. We pretty much made three variables on the screen to hold the text field, the bold box, and the italic box. In our constructor, we set the title and the layout. Nothing new. We pretty much added the text field, bold box, and italic box to the screen. And then we created a handler class to handle these events. Now again, Anytime you click one of these boxes, something called an item event occurs. Now, this can be handled by something called an item listener object. So that's why we needed to link this object to this class. Then, once we do that, we can handle the events using a method called item state changed. Now, this automatically runs, well, just like I told you before. And what we did pretty much is we pretty much had a variable called font to stylize the font right here 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 and here and then we pretty much once we found our style depending on what was checked we set it to the screen and then we just ran our program made a window good to go so that's your real quick tutorial on these are called state boxes because they maintain a state like uh, when you click them right here I'll show you why when you click them they stay like that so that's called maintaining a state so that's it for this tutorial thank you guys for watching in the next tutorial we'll be going over more GUIs and we will be eventually making this box pretty effing sweet for right now it doesn't do a whole lot but you know it will oh and another thing that if you follow my channel you know that I give away prizes sometime I am waiting for prizes to come in the mail now and it will be the best giveaway I had so far. So just a little um, tip for you guys who actually stuck through this tutorial and watched it all. Nice little surprise. Don't tell anyone else. So uh, trust me, when I get my prizes, it should be like next week or something. They're going to be the best giveaways ever. So you know, something to look forward to. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next tutorial.